Okay, so now that we hopefully understand what a manifold is, and we've previously seen what tensors are, we can begin to put the two concepts together. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the concept of the tangent space, or the tangent vector space today. So I'll introduce the concept sort of schematically, and I'll just sketch how we go about constructing it, and then I'll go through it again in a bit more detail. So, to begin with, obviously we're going to start with a manifold, which I'll call M. And for the purposes of this video, it's going to have a dimension D. Okay, so now we want to go about constructing the tangent space. So, to get an idea of how we're going to do this, let's first discuss what the tangent space is. Well, it's essentially a vector space that lives at every point in the manifold. So we begin by choosing a particular point in the manifold, I'll call it P. Then we essentially want to construct the vector space around that point P. So how do we actually go about doing that? Well, to begin with, we need to first consider the set of all possible curves, or smooth curves, that pass through the point P. So they could, for example, there's one possible curve, there's another, for example. So we consider the set of all possible curves which we could draw that pass through the point P. And I'm going to give this a name now. I'm going to call it C infinity of the manifold at the point P. So this is just shorthand for me saying the set of all smooth curves passing through the point P. So this set by itself is actually a vector space. It's not the vector space we want, but it's going to be a useful vector space for us. I'll just briefly remind you that by a vector space, you'll recall that we mean some kind of set. We usually want to call it V. So it's just a set of elements, but we can show that that set of elements has two particular operations, the vector addition and scalar multiplication. We defined this previously. And if you remember that we need a field that our vector space is over, we're always going to be working with real vector spaces. So what we're looking for now is essentially a set of objects on our manifold that behaves like a vector space, or the objects can be added and scalar multiplied just as we can with vectors. So this set of all smooth functions on our manifold that passes through the point is a vector space because we can add functions and we can scan and multiply them. Whilst this is a vector space, it's kind of a not very useful vector space because it's infinite dimensional and has a few other undesirable properties, but we're going to need to use it in our construction of the desirable vector space. Okay, so this is all just setting up. We have our now set of all smooth curves, and now we want to consider how we would form uh, a vector space out of these smooth curves. So each of these curves we, we usually think of as being parameterized in terms of some parameter. So if I call each curve phi, it's just going to be some function of a real parameter. So this phi, which is the curve, is a map from the real numbers so this just takes a lambda value and maps you to the manifold. And essentially here it's just mapping to the image of the curve in the manifold. So you should think of these orange lines as these, these curves, these five lambdas. They're just one dimensional subsets of our big set of points, the manifold. And this five lambda is just kind of picking out a one dimensional trajectory through the manifold. And that's a curve. Okay, so we still haven't got anywhere yet. We've just defined our set of all possible smooth curves. And now what we want to do, because for these curves are parameterized, we want to consider taking the parameter derivative of each curve. Now, if we just think about this sort of away from the manifold for a second, if you just have any kind of parameterized function, 
let's just now, for example, imagine that this is describing the trajectory of some particle moving in the xy plane. This curve which I've drawn is just some parameterized function of lambda. We might usually like to think of lambda as being time if we're talking about uh, particle trajectory. But now you should already realize or be able to guess how we're going to be able to form vectors or rather tangent vectors from this curve. All we need to do is take the parameter derivative, which now just thinking purely intuitionally, is just going to produce the velocity at each point. So if this were a particle moving through space, as it makes this trajectory, its time derivative is giving us the velocity. So it's this concept which we're going to use when we construct the tangent space. And we're going to want to be taking the parameter derivative of all of these smooth curves. So now I'll just state that again a bit more clearly. To produce the tangent vectors at this point, we simply need to take the derivative of all of the smooth curves. So each, each one of these smooth curves passing through the point is going to have some particular derivative vector or tangent vector now that points in some direction. And its magnitude is going to be dependent on so essentially how fast the parameter lambda runs through the curve. We could, for example, consider uh, a curve which follows out the exact same path or trajectory through the manifold. So it's this green and orange curve are tracing out the exact same path, but the green curve travels twice as fast, or the lambda parameter is twice as uh, large as uh, the parameter for the orange curve. So essentially all this is going to do is going to create a vector that points in the same direction, but because we're running through twice as fast, the velocity is just going to be twice as long. So now hopefully you should now have to be able to convince yourself that by drawing every possible curve passing through a single point and then creating that curve with some velocity given by how large the parameter is, you can quite easily produce a vector pointing in any direction and with any magnitude. Okay, so this is the in intuitive picture that we should always now keep at the back of our minds when we're thinking about the tangent space. We begin with manifold. We choose the point that we want to construct the tangent space around. We then consider all the possible curves that we could draw through that point, and those curves are going to be parameterized essentially by their speed through that point. And then if we take the derivative, or the parameter derivative, that's going to produce essentially the tangent or the tangent vector to that curve and the set of all those tangent vectors is the tangent space. So just quickly before we move on I'll just give you the terminology. We refer to the tangent space as T P M. So this is read as the tangent space at the point P of the manifold M. And now since the tangent space is going to be of well, this is a theorem that needs to be proved, I'm just going to take it for granted. The tangent space is a vector space of the same dimension as the manifold. So really the best way now to kind of visualise things is of visualising the tangent space as some kind of tangent plane or tangent three-dimensional space, whatever it is, to the point that you're thinking about and then all of your tangent vectors are going to live inside this tangent plane or tangent space. Okay, so that was the intuition overview. Now let's do all of this again, but with a slight, with a bit more detail.